Hello there. So for this exercise, we need to consider the following set of that we call V S is the set of real pairs. That means that we got this tuple made of X and Y where X and Y are real numbers. They could be the same. They could not be the same. It doesn't matter. The point is that they should be real. So let's pick two tuples of these uh, vector uh, possible vector space, that in this case is just a set of elements, uh, defined as follows. So it's u1, v, u2, and v1, v2. That are the components of these tuples. And we're going to define a summation uh, operation on this set as taking the elements of each of the, the each of the components, and we're going to sum them up. But at the end of each, we are going to add the plus one. That happens on both coordinates, both of the components of this uh, summation. So u2 plus v2 plus the one. And the uh, scalar, we're going to define a scalar multiplication on the set that is defined as just multiplying this factor k that is again a real number to each of the components of the vector. So this could be could define a vector space, but we cannot ensure that because we need to prove all the axioms. And that's kind of part of this exercise. So given that we got the definition of the operations and we got these vectors, this set of elements, let's see, let's see how these uh, operations behave. So here I have defined two vectors, u and v, and a scalar that is equal to 2. So let's see how this summation of vectors works. So we, we pick each of the components, 0 plus 1, and at the end we add an extra 1. That is how is this operation defined. Then for the second component of the summation, we pick the second component of each of the vectors, that means 4 plus 3, and we add an extra 1 here. So at the end, this vector is equals to 2, 2. Okay, so this is how the summation works in this set. And then the scalar multiplication. So this is uh, kind of easy because it's the, defined in the usual way. So it's 2 times 0, 4. So what this scalar is going to do on this vector is multiplying each of the, the components of the vector. That means that the result of this is equal to 0, 8. And that's it. So that's how these operations on this set works. Great. So having that in mind, that we know how these operations work on this uh, possible vector space, we call it just a set. We need to see what happened with uh, the neutral element. How, what's going to be the neutral element? So in this case, we need to show first that the trivial choice for a null vector or zero vector on the possible vector space, in this case, Vs, that is a set that we defined at the beginning, this is usually the, 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 the choice that the, of the null element or the neutral element, but we're, we need to show in that in this case, this is not true. Okay, so it's a trivial choice for this kind of, of neutral element on vector spaces. But in this case, it's not. So let's pick first an element of this Vs set, we know that we can define this as u1, u2, and we got this vector 0, 0. Okay, so let's sum this. So u plus the vector 0, 0 is just u1, u2 plus 0, 0. 
And based on how this uh, summation is defined on this set Vs, we got that is u1 plus 0. And remember that at the end, we add a plus 1. And the same happened for the second component is u2 plus 0 plus 1. So this plus 1 is what it makes that this vector 0, 0 is not the neutral element. Why? Because the neutral element should satisfy that u plus the neutral element return the same vector. That's why it's called neutral. It doesn't affect the, the vector after the summation. But in this case, what is happening is that we end with a vector u1 plus 1 and u2 plus 1. This is definitely not equal to the, to the vector u1, u2. So it not, is, this vector 0, 0 is not the neutral element because it doesn't satisfy this action here. That actually corresponds to the fourth action of a vector space. Okay, but this doesn't mean that this neutral element doesn't exist. It's just that this vector in particular, 0, 0, is not the neutral element. Now, we need to show that actually the vector minus 1, minus 1, is the neutral element under this summation operation on this set Vs. So we do we repeat the same procedure. We pick u equals to u1 and u2. And then we sum with this vector minus 1, minus 1. So we obtain u1, u2 plus the vector minus 1, minus 1. And remember how this operation works. That's really important. So we got u1 minus 1, u2 minus 1, and we need to add this plus 1 on each of the components. And well, now you can see that this will cancel out and we obtain again the vector u1 u2, which is equals to u. So we have verified that this will correspond to the neutral element because we got that u plus the neutral element is equals to u. We have checked this. So in this set, minus 1 minus 1 is a neutral element of the set Vs. Great. Now, based on that we have the neutral element defined, so remember that the neutral element in this set is minus 1, minus 1. Now, what is going to be the inverse or the, yes, the inverse of u? So we got a vector u on Vs. Then how we are going to define minus u? such that, as is written here, u plus minus u is equals to the neutral element. So to get this, I'm going to again pick u equals to u1, u2, but I'm going to put minus u equal to some coefficients that we need to determine, u1, u2. So let's see what these coefficients are going to be. So we need to satisfy this condition here. So u1, u2 plus alpha 1, alpha 2 should be equals to the neutral element that is minus 1, minus 1. This sum over here is equal to u1 plus alpha 1 plus 1, u2 plus alpha 2 plus 1. 
and this need to be equals to minus one minus one and from this you can observe that alpha one should be equal to u1 minus 2 and alpha 2 is the same but with the second component so we have that the inverse of a vector in this case minus u is defined as u1 minus 2 and u2 minus 2 And the last part of this exercise is which axiom, this here is just an abbreviation that you use for, I use for the axiom. So which axiom of a vector space doesn't hold? So for this set of elements, that's why I didn't call it a vector space, there are some axioms that it doesn't satisfy in this case. So let's check, for example, what happened with the seventh axiom? The seventh axiom say that if I pick some scalar, that means some real values, just a number, okay? Then k times u plus v should be equals to ku plus kv. This is a distributive property for the scalar multiplication over uh, vectors. So let's see what happened with the left-hand side of this expression. So k times u plus v is equivalent, and we're going to define our vectors as the usual way. So u is equals to u1, u2, and v is equals to v1, v2, okay? So this is equals to k, and this summation remember how the summation works on this set, is equals to u1 plus v1 plus 1, u2 plus v2 plus 1, times this scalar, and this, at the end, after multiplying k to each of the components, that is how is defined here, the scalar multiplication, it's going to be equals to k, u1, plus v1 plus 1. These are just real numbers, so there's no problem. k times u2 plus v2 plus 1. So this corresponds to the left-hand side of this expression. Now, let's see what happened with the right-hand side. So for the right-hand side, we got that ku plus kv. So KU and KB, KU is equals to KU1 KU1 KU2 plus K here's V V1 K v2 but these summations work differently what happened here is that the summation is equal to k u1 plus k v1 plus 1 and here we got k u2 plus k v2 plus 1. so what happened is that here these two expressions are different. Why? Because k times 1 is k, and here we have just 1 instead of k. Okay, so these two expressions are different. That means that this axiom in, partic in particular doesn't hold, so it's not true. So it is enough to show that one axiom is doesn't satisfy to say that this set Vs is not a vector space. However, part of the exercise say that we need to find two axioms that doesn't hold on this, uh, on this set. And the second one, the second axiom that doesn't hold is the eighth axiom. 
actually is more, are more related with the uh, scalar multiplication that we got problems. So it say that given k a, and m the scalars or real values are just numbers, k plus m times a vector u, in this case u is part of the set Vs, is equal to ku plus mu, is a distributed property. So let's check what happened with the left-hand side of the expression. So k plus m times u, k plus m are just a scalar, so they, we are summing two scalars, is again another scalar, so we can consider this just as a whole, just a one scalar, and u is a vector. So this square multiplication is defined as distributing the, pro, the, the this multiplication which is with each of the components of u. That means k plus m times u1 and k plus m times u2. But on the right hand side, we got a problem. What happened is that Q, KU plus MU, these are equals to KU1, KU2 plus K, I'm sorry, here's M, MU1 and MU2. And when we sum these two vectors together, we get we got k u one plus m u one plus one, and here we got k u two plus m u two plus one. So here the problem is on this one here that doesn't appear on the left hand side. So that implies that this the eight as axiom doesn't hold. So this is not satisfied for the set Vs. So that's why this Vs set equipped with these two operations is not a vector space.